Hey everyone, and in this video we'll be creating this parallax fade out effect for the hero section. You can apply it to a hero section on your homepage, or maybe this will be the first section on your blog post page. So there's a number of different ways where you could utilize this effect, and it will also work with the white background color, but I chose black because it just, it just looks cooler. And with the responsivity settings, mm, it's not so great as you might have guessed, but we'll find the workaround later in this video too. By the way, this entire tutorial was originally inspired by this cool website, and I recommend you to go and have a look at it yourself. And besides this animated hero section, in this tutorial there will be a little bonus. We'll also explore how to create this kind of header transition. And you see that this header, while being on top of the hero section, is transparent, but once we scroll past the first black section, it actually gets a background, and it's slightly blurred. We've already made a blurry header tutorial on our channel before, but it's not about making the header blurry, it's about making this transition from the transparent background into a solid or maybe half-transparent background for your header. This is not a universal solution, it won't work with each and every design and page structure, but just in case you're curious, I decided to include it in the video too. So now in the first part of this tutorial, we'll focus specifically on this hero section effect for the background image, which to my liking looks pretty sick. So get your Elementor editor ready, let's get started. So now we're an Elementor editor and I'll walk you through the process of creating that hero section, but I already have a couple of sections prepared, so I don't waste your time while making them. These are just normal sections that you create with Elementor, there is nothing fancy or specific about them, those are just normal sections that are there to give you some context for the page. And I will now go and create one more section above the first section that I have here. The first thing I do is I'll set the fit to screen height, so it takes up the entire height of the screen. But if you plan to use this exact section for the tablet and mobile devices, it's recommended that you choose not the fit to screen option, but the minimum height option and set the VH to 100. This will allow you to achieve the exact same effect, fit to screen on desktop, and on mobile or on tablet devices, if you need to change it up, then it will simply move the slider, because the minimum height option is actually responsive, which is not the case with the fit to screen option. You cannot change the values specifically for each device. So this option gives you way more flexibility. Now the next step is to add the background image. So we'll go to style and select the image for our background. Now in position we'll select center, center, in the size it will be cover, and in attachment it will be fixed. This how we'll make sure that the image stays still in the background as the other sections will scroll past. And if this is not what you're seeing on your page, click on the section settings of this next section. If you cannot access it, you can use navigator, and there it is. This is my second section, and I can go to Z index and increase the Z index. And this is what you can do if you are not seeing the second section above the first section. So simply change the Z index. Higher Z index means that this particular section will be above other sections if we imagine that there are, let's say, layers on top of each other. So let's get back to the first section and let's rename it. Let's call it Hero. Now let's add motion effects. We'll only need scrolling effects, so we'll enable the scrolling effects option here. And we'll start with transparency, but overall we'll be changing only these three properties, transparency, blur and scale. Transparency goes first and we'll need fade out because we need our image to be disappearing gradually as we scroll down. And I'll move the slider to be at 52 or 53 around that point. And I'll leave the second slider at 80 and we'll see how it works. So the image disappears completely and if it's not what you're seeing, if your image doesn't disappear completely, you can simply increase the level and set it to let's say 15 or 12. Now there goes blur and this is the same thing, fade out, and here we'll go through the same process. Fade out, move the first slider to 52 and the second slider will leave at 80. And if you want more blur, you can simply move this slider and you'll get more blur. You 
you can see how the amount of blur changes as you move the slider. So I leave it at 10 and now the scale. The scale is a tricky one because it can get pretty wonky. So simply make sure that you move the first slider to 52, that the direction is set to scale up and maybe bring the speed down to three or two. So it looks a little bit more subtle and a little bit more elegant. So the background image is animated, but we can see the white background of the page as we scroll down. And this is not what we want to get in the end, because the color of our section background is black here. So what we can do is go to settings, go to style and change this color here, body color, to the same color that matches the color of our section background here. And then this previous section and the next section simply become one and you don't see this transition. So it looks something like that. But as you remember, I also had a little heading here. And this is what we're going to do next. I'll drop a heading there. I'll add portfolio. I don't know why I picked portfolio, just some random word. Change the color and change the typography settings. Also align it to center. And now in advanced settings, we'll go to positioning and in position we'll set fixed. This is what it's going to do. And in the offset, we'll switch to percent. And I'll set it to somewhere around 45, but you can adjust these values to see what fits to your design better. So there we have it. This is the background transition that we were after. And if you have a header on your page, and you most likely do. And if you want this header to be on top of your hero section, sometimes this is the design solution that you go for. And in this case, just use negative margin to move your section up. I figured that for my particular sections, this is the needed value, but yours will be different. And if needed, you can also add the background overlay to your image. Simply pick the color, I'll go for pitch black and I'll switch the blend mode to multiply and I'll bring the opacity down to two or three depending on my image and how dark I want the overlay to be. As for the mobile and tablet view, you know that attachment fixed for images only works on desktop. This is what you're going to get on the mobile device. Now to fix that weird looking title, what we could do is to create a duplicate for this title and one version will only show up on desktop and the other version will be stored for the tablet and mobile devices. So this is the solution that you could go for. So for the desktop version in the responsive settings, we'll set hide on tablet and hide on mobile. And for the mobile version, we'll do the opposite. We'll check hide on desktop. And for the same mobile version, we'll go to positioning and change the position to default. Now we'll close this. And what we'll get is the regular page that you are used to seeing normally. And as you've noticed, yes, I do have all of the motion effects turned off for the mobile layout. It's not really a good idea for now to display motion effects on mobile and tablet devices because it might not look as good as you expect it to. And sometimes for the user, it might be really frustrating and, and it might really disrupt the experience on your website. So to completely avoid these risks, it is safer to simply disable the motion effects that you're not sure will be working on mobile and tablet devices, like straight away. Now, once we're done with the hero section transition, in the second part of the video, we'll focus on the header specifically and I'll walk you through all the steps. So let's 
now pick up where we left off. This is why we'll now jump to the editor and have a look at the header that I have here. So this is my setup over there and this is the section with uh, the header elements and you cannot see anything because the background is transparent and our elements are white and this is I'll, and I'll temporarily make the color black so we can see what's going on there. So this section is for mobile view and it will only appear on mobile devices, tablets, smartphones, etc. And all you need to do here while creating your header is go to advanced and set the Z index to the highest value possible to make sure that the header in any circumstances is always above all the rest of the elements on your page. Also what you need to do is to make sure that you go to motion effects and you enable the sticky on top option and on what devices to enable and disable it you decide but I would only make it work on desktop and leave this option inactive on tablets and on mobile devices. So that's all we need to do here at this point and in this style I'll go and I'll remove the background and click update. Now let's have a closer look at what's going on as we scroll down. You see that the background image and the heading are both fixed, they have a fixed position. And as we scroll down we have this fade out of the background image and at this point the background here becomes black but as we scroll past this first section we can clearly see that this transparent background on our header is really distracting and we cannot make sense of anything what is written here we cannot read the text we cannot access the links it's completely unusable and we have to change that to do it we will now need to create one more section right above this first section with black background and I'll quickly create one more section and I'll see it appear right here in the navigator and I'll call it background for header and having this section selected we'll go to height minimum height and we'll set it to 100 because this is the height of our header I have this section that contains these links, these menu items. I have it set at 100 pixels. I'm using pixels here. But yes, it's actually recommended to use VH or VW. But here for header, I'll stick with pixels. And in a couple seconds, you'll see why we need pixels. Because we'll be actually moving this section using negative margins. And it'll be easier for us to pick the right value if we're using pixels here and we'll be using pixels for the negative margin. The second thing we'll need to do with this particular section is go to advanced, go to margin, unlink all the values and in the bottom margin we'll need to set it to minus 100. And you see what's happening here. Now we made these two sections overlap. Now next thing, Z index. The Z index for this background for header section has to be higher than the Z index that this section has, which is 10. We'll remember that. We will click back on the background for header section and set Z index to 50, which is higher. And now we can see that the section actually appears on top. We can see this bounding boxes here, which means that the section is on top of uh, this section with the text. And the very last thing, motion effects, sticky, top, and also disabled for a tablet and for mobile devices. Even hide it on tablet and on mobile, because our header itself won't be sticky on tablet and on mobile devices, so we don't really need this section anymore. And actually, no, this wasn't the last thing. The last thing is to change the background color to black. But to black, in my case, in your case, it might be a completely different color but to change it to the color you want for your background because we cannot leave the background in the section transparent and now you can see that this section actually is sticky and at the moment as this section reaches the top of the viewport it sticks to the top and the header does too this is why they overlap and the header is on top of the section and they're both sticky and as we scroll down we see what we want to see we see the header with the background. At this point it's completely transparent and as we scroll down it's kind of hard to make out what we're seeing because 
it's kind of hard to distinguish between the background of the header and the background of the page. You could solve this problem in a couple different ways. What we can do is to make this background semi-transparent and add some blurriness to it. So it blurs the background underneath. This is how we're gonna do it. We'll go to color and we'll bring this down to, let's say, 70% opacity. You can also bring it even lower and then we'll go to advanced and in custom CSS we'll need to insert a code snippet. Folks who already watched our tutorial on blurry header background will instantly recognize this code snippet because I used this exact method to create the blurry header background and they even use it on the official Apple website. So you might be interested to check out that tutorial to learn more about what this actually is and how it works and how it makes your header background blur all the contents of the page below it. But at this point, this does the job and we can see that it's way better. So if you liked this video and you found this technique as interesting as I did, then leave this video a like and write a comment. If you have any suggestions, if you have any requests, just feel free to leave them in the comments and we'll find a way to find the answers to all of your questions and all of your requests. By the way, if you need an Elementor WordPress theme or some design assets, there is templatemaster.com, regular discounts, huge product selection and round the clock technical support. This is what you get with templatemaster.com. So make sure you'll check it out. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.